The Air Jordan spring lineup for 2025 is looking pretty crazy. The final Yeezy restock is right around the corner. A lot of SB news, another Nike lawsuit has been settled. All of these stories and plenty more in this week's Sneaker Wrap. Hello everybody, it is me, Jordan Young, and this is another banger. Every Saturday I do these weekly Sneaker Wrap videos where we take a look back at the biggest sneaker releases of the week, chat about some of the most interesting sneaker news stories, and generally just have a gay old time with one another. If you guys wanna keep up with me in real time, be sure to go over to IG and give me a follow there. Let's start things off by recapping this week's biggest sneaker releases and I think this week was like the biggest sneaker release week of the year so far. Let's start off with the Nike SB Dunk Low Futuras. A lot of talk around the sneaker. These have been really hyped up. A lot of demand for these. Something like 30 to 40k pairs released. Apparently here in the EU and the UK there was something like only 1500 pairs made available. Did you guys manage to get a hold of these? Let me know. We also had the J Balvin release for for the Rio 3s, which a bit like the Futuras were really popular as well, and also very limited, something like 30 to 40K pairs as well on this particular release. Resale prices are quite similar to the Futuras between sort of 280 pounds and around 400 pounds, depending on the sizes. The release on the J Balvin website was really interesting. I made a video earlier in the week covering the release, but basically J Balvin put these shoes on his website for $25,000. And the only way you could get them for the normal retail price is if you had been given the proper discount code. Because this discount code was given out to people that had been given exclusive access because they'd spent up on his site previously, it meant that people that were running auto checkout bots ended up paying the 25K for the shoes. So an interesting technique from Balvin used to try to deter bot users. Did you guys come up on the J Balvins? Let me know. We also had the KD6 Weathermans, which for a lot of my old school Nike basketball heads out there would have been a must cop. I was delighted to get my hands on these and we'll be looking forward to bringing you guys my thoughts on these in tomorrow's review. We also had the Nike 180 Ultra Marines. These sold out instantaneously. I slept on the release five minutes after they released on the Nike sneakers app. I checked, they were gone. These are reselling for like over 200 pounds at the moment here in the UK, which I'm gutted about. And then for you guys over there in the US, you had the Air Jordan 1 Low Travis Scott Elkins, the canary yellow colorway. This is supposed to be the most voluminous pair of Travis 1 Lows to date, something like 175,000 pairs. It seems like from what the resale market is saying that most people that hit on these for retail are reselling them. Prices as a result aren't too scandalous if you're loving this particular colorway. No release date info specifically anyway for here in the UK or the EU. I would imagine these would probably release towards the end of next week or maybe this time next week. There were also some other sneaky releases as well that went down including the Pine Green SBs and then a restock of these toils or I don't know if they're supposed to be called the toilets because they kind of look like toilet wallpaper or maybe the pattern on super fancy two ply toilet paper i'm not sure but these restocked as well did you guys come up on anything this week feel free to let me know down below right here let's get into the news and i want to start off with this story here cool kiy has been ordered to pay nike one million dollars to settle the nike lawsuit this comes off the back of the recent news that omi in a hellcat was also ordered to pay nike to settle their claims and these are all in respect of trademark infringements and some people have been asking well why did didn't he just get a cease and desist? Why didn't this follow the same type of formula as previous lawsuits with the likes of Warren Lotus or John Geiger or Bape or whatever? How come this guy has been slapped with such a big fine? And the reason is pretty simple. He was issued a cease and desist or he was told to stop, but he just kept on doing it. He kept on producing these shoes. And so if you're told not to do something by Nike because you're infringing on their trademarks and you continue to do it, it's only inevitable that you are gonna be slapped with this huge order. You guys might've seen this story that was floating around this week as well. This was a reaction from Big Smoke, AKA Skepta. If you don't know who Skepta is, he's one of the most famous rap artists from here in the UK. And he has in the past collaborated collaborated with Nike and a couple of years ago he moved over to Puma and he recently worked on his very own signature shoe which he designed having taken some inspiration from the archives of Puma and in this tweet he says my shoes are selling out again much better deal now that I got royalties from shoes sold thank you to everybody on the shoe journey with me literally my dream come true he went on to say that he made bangers at that last place and they still treated me like an influencer because I haven't been to school for shoe design but 
the game is the game I could never complain. Did Nike fumble the bag with Skepta? Should they have given him royalties on the shoes that he helped to design or inspire? Was it fair that he was just treated like an influencer? And does he really have cause for complaints here, even though in the same tweet he says he could never complain? I don't know, it's a bit of a tricky one really. On the one hand, he didn't design any of these shoes, he just essentially slapped on some colorways. I don't think you should get royalties off every single shoe sold if all you did was ask for a particular colorway to be splashed on it. I do think it's a little bit ironic making a tweet complaining and then saying that you're not complaining. But at the end of the day, he's found his feet nicely over at Puma. What do you guys think about that? Let me know down below. Right, let's talk about some new sneakers upcoming, some new announcements. We're going to talk about the Yeezy release momentarily. But before we get to that, I want to talk about this. We've got some more Travis Scott ones that have been announced. We have this really nice looking olive pair that are set to come out later on this year, I think. This lighter colored olive pair that are set to drop next year. This velvet brown pair, which are supposedly coming out in the spring of next year. And then we have these new models that were just announced this week. These have been called the Dark Pony, which is essentially a cream color with some mocha blocking and a pink swoosh. And then we have this shy pink colorway, which is predominantly pink. These are also supposed to be coming out spring next year. Then we have this pale vanilla colorway, which is also supposed to be coming out in the spring springtime of next year as well. Right, let's talk about the Yeezy restock. The final Yeezy rollout ever is set to go down from May the 27th. And let's go through some of these main colorways here. There's a whole bunch dropping on the 27th of May. None of them particularly amazing to me. You've got some foam runners, the stone salts. We've got the V2 statics, the carbon belugas. I guess some people might be looking forward to the foam runner MX Cinder and maybe the 950 Pirate Blacks. I've seen a lot of people talking about the Yeezy boots, but there are quite a few cool shoes dropping on May the 27th. And then after June the 3rd, the next date is supposed to be June the 6th. And on June the 6th, the standouts for me anyway, are going to be the Pirate Black V1s, the Knit Runner boots in the sulfur colorway crazy shoe out there shoe for sure definitely a good winter banger it's looking like june the 10th is the next date after that and the standout shoes on june the 10th include the mx carbon foam runner the slide the azures i think a lot of people have been looking forward to those maybe the green glow slides as well june the 11th you've got the nls t the ns limited boots the khaki these stirred up a lot of interesting reactions when they first dropped otherwise the big shoe on june the 11th at least for me anyway are the turtle doves and then the final date is june the 13th where we have the 450 slide as well as the foam runner as well as probably the one shoe i think that everybody is looking forward to seeing restock again the 700 v1 wave runners arguably one of Kanye's best sneakers of all times. So what about you guys? Are you guys into this Yeezy restock project or have you just gone off the shoes and gone off the man completely? Feel free to let me know. It's been a crazy month for releases and it's not even over yet. On the 31st, we're supposed to be getting the Action Bronson New Balance 1906R. I'm not sure if we're gonna be getting all three different colorways on the same day or if they're gonna be sort of staggered out one at a time. I think it's gonna be all three at the same time, but there are three colorways just to remind you you have this Mezul or this striking blue colorway as well as a Scorpius pair, which is the orange and the yellow combo. And then this Rosewater colorway as well, which is the delicate white and pink mix. And Bronson has revealed that the Scorpius pair is gonna be the most limited and likely to be the only pair sold exclusively on his website. I'm excited for this release for sure. What about you guys? So we've had some more rumors and leaks around Air Jordan's 2025 spring lineup and we already know about the reimagined black metallic fives that are set to come out during the spring but there are also rumors out there that we might be getting a retro of the grape fives in the og form as well as the fire red five this is according to z sneakerheads on ig and couple that with the fact that we're also getting the red jordan ones as well as the blue colorway of the sb4s there's also these royal lows i'm not that fussed to be honest about the old bloodline 12s but the laser fours that could be an interesting shoe to look forward to as well. And then you have the diffused blue Air Jordan 3s and then these unions that we have at home. Add in the Travis One Lows that we spoke about earlier in the episode to the spring lineup, as well as these Diet Carolinas and the Obsidian One Lows. Mate, it is looking good. I'm not that fussed, to be honest, about 
these 13s. The Nigel Sylvester 4s could be a dub. These early mock-ups aren't really doing them much justice, but it's looking like a pretty exciting lineup. I'm only really that keen on the Nigels, maybe the Obsidian 1 lows. I'll take any of the Travises. The SB4s, I need the breads, and probably would be quite keen on all the 5s, to be honest. So no, there's definitely some heat in there for sure. What about you guys? What do you think? Heaps of Nike SB Dunk news. I want to start off with this. We've got some on-foot looks of the SB Dunk Low Trocadero Gardens. If you guys don't know, the Trocadero Gardens are situated in Paris, right in front of the Eiffel Tower, just across the Pont d'Ena Bridge. The colorway takes inspiration from the colors of the marble tiles around the gardens. And it's a really clean colorway. No specific release date for these, although because of the inspiration from Paris, it's likely that these are gonna roll out during the Paris Olympics or at some point over the summer. And I personally think these look really nice. What about you guys? We've also had some on-foot looks of another Nike SB collab set to come out this autumn. These are the there skateboards SB Dunk Lows and they come out in this sort of black and green colorway. Design's really cool, materials look really wicked. I'm not sure what's going on with this zesty lace lock Dubray thing. That's a bit sus, but I actually think these are really dope. What do you guys think? We've also had some more looks at the Verdi SB Dunks, which still don't have a release date announced, but this Visti colorway is getting a few people excited and has actually turned a few people off from what I've seen in reactions to the shoe in the comments online. I personally think it's a wild out there, crazy colorful shoe. I think these are really cool to be honest. And apparently these are gonna be coming out in all sizes so even the kids can get involved. We've also seen another new SB Dunk low colorway set to come out in the holiday season. This particular pair is inspired by the mid 90s Seattle Supersonics jerseys, which if you remember back to the 96 season when the Bulls went 72 and 10 and faced off against the Sonics in the finals was a really cool jersey. This colorway is really dope. I like these, man. What do you guys think of these? I've also seen some really good on foot looks of the SB Dunk Low Safari, which are coming out this summer to celebrate the Olympic Games. These are supposed to be coming out in full family sizing, so the kids are gonna be able to get involved with these as well. And you'll be able to recognize the colorway or the color inspiration from previous Safari inspired pairs, including the MX One. This close up here has them looking really good, particularly with these really sort of shaggy suede mid panels and toe box. Nice contrast with the blue laces. I am feeling these. What about you guys? We've had a couple more colorways of the Jumpman Jacks announced for later on this year. This particular pair is called the Tolpe Haze. Of course, we were going to get a Tolpe Haze. And I think at this point, does anyone know what Tolpe Haze actually refers to? I've lost track of how many Tolpe Haze colorways that we've had from Nike and Jordan brand where the colors just aren't that similar. So if someone can let me know down below, that will be great. But I actually like this color blocking a lot. I know these are just speculative mock-ups at this point, but I do like them the way they are right here. Hopefully they come out something like this. And then the other Jumpman Jack that we've seen images of this week are these. These are called the Thunder Blues, which are also releasing in the fall later on this year. Again, nice, clean blocking for sure. I think this is a good move from Nike. They have desperately needed some new product for a long time now, and I think the success of the Jumpman Jack so far this year has definitely whetted the appetite for people who are no doubt gonna be clamoring to get their hands on these. What do you guys think? Pretty nice pair of Asics Light 3s are releasing on May the 31st. This is a Ronnie Fayeg shoe, and these are being made to celebrate the opening of Kith in South Korea in Seoul. These are supposedly gonna be quite limited, but will be available on kith.com as well as the EU Kith as well as the Kith app. So yeah, pretty cool. Had some detailed looks at the Air Jordan 4 RM in the oxidized green colorway. And I wonder how people are now reacting to the Jordan 4 RM. Now that we've seen a few more GR colorways wheel out, I'm feeling like they look like some discount T-Mass Jordans. I'm not inspired by this particular colorway, even though it's not a million miles removed from the Nigel Sylvester joints. I'm just not that excited about these. They definitely give me diet Jordan 4 vibes. I do think one once these GR models start hitting the market that they are going to brick and eventually go on sale. I think the only one of any notes is gonna be that Nigel Sylvester joint. What do you guys think about that? Is that a hot take? So we've had some more colorways crop up of one of Nike's most exciting new sneakers that are dropping this year, the Nike Jams, or as they're calling them, the Engineered to Break. Yeah, this is a break dancing shoe and they kind of look a little bit like some kind of old school running shoe from maybe back in the late 90s, but I do think the silhouette is really nice. I do think these colorways are also really nice and I'm wondering what you guys think is this the next shoe from Nike to potentially be popular with casuals 
not just hardcore break dancers. I think if they come in at a reasonable price point, right around maybe the 100 to 120 dollar mark, I think these could be really popular. I'd definitely be interested in getting my hands on them, although I certainly won't be doing any head spins. What do you guys think? Radio, let's finish off by talking about this week's upcoming sneaker releases. Obviously, starting off the week, you've got May the 27th, the first rollout of the Yeezy restock, a whole bunch of sneakers to keep your eyes out for. Best thing to do is to make sure you've got the confirmed app downloaded and just keep your eyes peeled on there for the updates. May the 29th, the Air Jordan 1 OG lattes are dropping, I think, for you guys over there in the US. I don't can't remember if these have dropped here already in the UK. May the 30th, you've got the Air Jordan 17 Low Lightnings. These have been a bit of a topic of discussion for a lot of people because these are coming back out with the briefcase, I think, and are set to roll out at around $300 which is a little bit hefty. On the 30th, you have the Salehi Banbury Crocs shoe, the Juniper. I know a lot of people out there are gonna be interested to see how these are on foot. And then on May the 31st, you have the Action Bronson New Balance collab, as well as the Runny Fayeg A6 Gel 3 collab that I just talked to you about earlier. So there's still a lot of cool shoes yet to come and the month isn't even over yet. And that is it for this week's Sneaker Wrap. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch the video. Really appreciate your guys' support on the channel. It means a lot. Don't forget to give the video a like before you bounce and I will see you guys tomorrow for my review of the KD6 Weathermans as well as a couple of other shoes I picked up this week as well. So I'll see you guys then. Take care for now and peace.